Hello, everyone. Good morning. Hello. Dan and I are here and uh, we're in a Cuban kind of mood. Uh, although we did, I did have Nicaraguan rum last night, <laughs> not Cuban rum. <laughs> I might have some Cuban rum tonight then after this. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay. I yeah. have, have my favorites picked, I think. Yeah. So welcome, guys. I mean, we're gonna, I guess, uh, wait uh, one or two minutes. We have people that are uh, entering into the webinar right now, um, so we have an opportunity for everybody to uh, come in. For the people that don't know me, I what can I say? The darling friends for uh, a long time. I have been doing a number of uh, photo tours for her. Uh, work together in some uh, stuff, and now you know, we, are, we are doing uh, this uh, tour in Cuba. Uh, so it, I thought it was a good idea to show what it is to uh, be there, uh, take pictures there, and um, you know all those um, good things. Hey, I'm checking some of the names. We got Anne Nickerson in the house. Hey, Anne. Clayton, Clayton came to Nicaragua with me. Ed Barbieri, one of my students in my courses. Lots of names I recognize. Awesome, Stephanie, welcome everyone. Vivian also. So it looks like they can, um, we can unmute them, it says if they want to speak. So mm -hmm. what we're gonna do is, is uh, we're gonna do kind of a show and tell. We're gonna share some of our Cuba pictures. We're going to share some stories. We'll probably get silly because that's what Dan and I do. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> anybody who's been on tour with us can attest. Uh, there's a chat that you can put chat in. And you can also, um, there's a Q&A, right? So they can put questions in the Q&A. So if you have a question about an image or a question about going to Cuba, because we are going to be talking about our tour as well. You can put those in um, the Q&A, and I see somebody has already put one. Uh, it says chat is disabled, Dan, so I don't know if you can disable Let me check that. Thanks, Stephanie. We will work on that. Uh, and you can also raise your hand if you have a question and you want to say something verbally as well. So um, who wants to go first, Dan? You want to go first with yours? Yeah, I can, I can, I can start. Uh, let me see. Okay, everyone. So we're Let's gonna see. Start, we're going to start with our five favorite images of Cuba or some of our favorites and then why it's our favorites and talk about it. So go ahead, Dan. Okay, yeah, we have a question from Edward uh, regarding the tour itself. Edward, I mean, we're going to... Uh, probably go back to your question in a couple of minutes. He wants to know how big are the groups and about uh, U.S. citizens. So uh, we'll, we'll cover that. But uh, what we spoke about, uh, you know, with Darlene to get started is one of the things that we say is like a why a photo tour to Cuba, right? So, you know, what is important? And I'll start with mine. I'm going to share two or three of my uh, favorite pictures from there. And then I guess that will do the same. And then we will continue with the, with the rest of, of the program. So uh, my first uh, time or my first trip to Havana, Cuba, was in 2016. And when I got there, I was immediately hooked, you know. Since then, up to our last time, which was, was right before COVID, I will, probably was there like around 10 times. So, um, you know, it's a combination of things for me, you know, the people, uh, the culture, you know, the streets. Cubans are very welcoming, right? And they have a very big sense of community and, and family, and they welcome everybody, right? So that's super important for them. Yep. And as far as photography, documenting those things, you can go, you go on a walk on the streets, right? On the afternoon, and you'll find, you know, people gossiping in corners, you know, uh, kids playing football or soccer, you know, uh, People playing domino, people fishing the Malicon. There's a lot of things going on on the streets all the time, which makes it very attractive. And on top of that, you have this like weird juxtaposition of 
some buildings that are modern that been you know removed, and then you have these other buildings that been you know crumbled, you know uh, neglected for over fifty years. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's a very interesting combination that I haven't seen anywhere else, and I like to document that because I know at some point that's going to change. It's impossible that you know we we always see this, and I think with the time these things are going to change. So that's why you know I like uh, that that much to to go there. I'm going to share my screen. Yes. Say. No, go ahead. While I while I do that. Yeah, go. Yeah, I was just gonna say you haven't shared your screen, so okay. I I agree with Dan. Like it's we it's called a photographer's paradise for a reason because there's just a cornucopia of things to photograph. Okay, so this is uh one of my you know most favorite pictures that I made there. Uh, probably because to me it's a uh, you know combination of you know the culture ballerinas are you know very you know important there and here you are showing you know this old building it um you know flag that you know it it, it says cuba all the whole picture is cuba and this image won a couple of awards so that's probably why it's one of my my favorites right and we did this very casual with Darlene when on uh, she was there. Darlene was there with me when we made this picture. Uh, it was on the end of our last tour. We went on the streets for you know uh, to walk, and you know we made this picture. Also, you know something things that happened in Cuba, right? So I keep showing you other pictures, like uh, this is one from the Malecon. Okay, this is on my first trip. I did this. Because this is very quintessential Cuba or Havana, you know, people fishing in the Malecon there. Maybe explain what the Malecon is, because people who haven't been there, they don't know what that means. <laughs> what the Malecon is, in which the Malecon is where, like, uh, you know, is between the city and the ocean, and it's basically in the afternoon, you know, a lot of people from. Havana uh, goes there. I, I have a picture showing the, the, the marathon later on. Uh, but it's basically, you know, the, the, the coast and, and, and there is this uh, place where, you know, people go there. Um, I was going to say something else. Okay, this is another one of my uh, you know, favorite images there because you can see the Hotel Nacional, which is very important uh, there or the most important hotel. Uh, and uh, this, uh, you can see the, the, the old cars, you know, going by. So I, I was there in an afternoon. I used my tripod to make this picture and I was waiting to get the, the right car going by. And this is, you know, the last one that I'm going to show from this batch. This is a boxer. We did on the, also when the link was there. And these are the things that I, that I you know, happened in Cuba. Like, the ballerina that you saw before, she is a dancer of the National Ballet in Cuba, right? This guy here, he is a, you know, Olympic medalist in Cuba. So I, 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 I cannot think in any other place where you can just say, okay, I'm going to go and take pictures of someone from the National Ballet or, you know, find like something like this guy, uh, he's a, you know, medalist and, you know, be able to take pictures of him. Exactly. So, you know, uh, I'm going to stop so you can, you can go, you know, on the same scene, uh, there. Mm -hmm. and in the meantime, I'm going to answer two questions that I have here. Okay. One is, um, when will be the next, well, after February 2023, we don't have any plans. That's the one, uh, we have right now. We probably do another one in 2024. Yeah. But we haven't talked about that yet. Yeah, usually yeah. January or February, Ed, because yeah. it's not uh, hurricane season and the, the weather's not too hot at that point. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to answer Stephen's question. And in terms of your uh, surgery, Ed, it's fairly ambulatory. And a lot of the castles that we stay at are not on the main floor. We try and get main floor. But especially in Old Havana, like, so we stay at Casa Particulars, which is like a and b or an Airbnb in somebody's home. And that's also how we are allowed to bring Americans because it's supporting the American people. 
when you stay in a hotel, those are all government owned and run. And the, the um, part of the regulations for Americans is you cannot give any money to the government or, you know, support the government of Cuba, right? So um, when we stay at Casa's, um, some of them are, they're all really nice, but some are upstairs and we do have a fair bit of walking. And I know Kevin had emailed me that question as well in terms of how much, I don't know, sometimes not very much if we're driving, you know, sometimes we just get out of the car and we're at our location, but other times if we're doing a city walking tour, you know, we could be walking for two or three hours. It might be, you know, two to three miles or five kilometers. Does that sound about right, Diane? Yeah, that's correct. And uh, I'm going to also address the one from uh, Edward uh, that he asked about uh, how big are the groups. Uh, on this particular tour, the group is uh, 10 people. Nice. Uh, logistics for Americans, I uh, mean, the way it works is uh, you need to go uh, on a specific uh, visa, let's call it visa, uh, but it's a, actually it's a permit uh, that you can get granted if you go there under the objective of supporting the Cuban people. That needs to be operated for a company that can, you know, uh, uh, fulfill those regulations. And that means, like, for example, you know, all the activities that you are doing there need to be, you know, towards helping and supporting uh, the Cuban people. You have to like eat in regular, you know, paladares or restaurants that are, you know, owned by locals. You need to stay in casas, not in hotels. That's why we are staying in casas. Basically, you have to patronize everything that is owned, um, you know, a small business owned, you know, and that's what you are. And you are in, under, you know, that uh, regulation. You don't have any problem. You can, you can, you can. So uh, that's uh, the way we. I would like to add to that too, and I want to get onto my image set here. Mm -hmm. Is that um, both of those questions, Ed? Uh, yes, you can get the visa, and we uh, we obtain that for you. So if you are an American and you register with us, you just tell us yes, we will get the visa for you, and we get all your information and so on, and, mm -hmm. and we handle all that for you. And the company that we work with as our supplier. Um, is actually a New Zealand company, and it's all it's all done correctly and legally. Extending the tour, uh, we do have an extension afterwards, and in which we're going to be doing more things like hiring ballet dancers, going to you know the gym, things like that that aren't going to necessarily happen on the main tour. But back in Havana, we'll have three days um, to book some scheduled to, uh, things like that in the extension. Staying beyond that as an American, um, maybe Dan, you can speak to that later because I know you've done that um, and mm -hmm. it's a little bit tricky. Um, okay, so let me get on to some of my photos because I know Stephen asked about, do you tip people after taking their picture? Okay, so here's the thing, it really depends. Um, for example, this man here, oops, this man here, I did not tip. I danced with him. So this is one of my favorite pictures from Cuba uh, because like Dan said, the culture and the music, it's infectious, right? And I challenge anybody to sit still when the music is playing and not sort of, you know, want to dance along. And um, I will get Dan dancing one of these days. So people that have been on- Your baby. Whoa, whoa. I will you get you to dance salsa. <laughs> Dan is an Argentinian who claims he doesn't know how to dance salsa, so we're going to fix that. But this man is, you know, he's he's a staple in the tourism industry, and we're at this very famous bar in Havana, Boca de, um, Boca del Medio, right? And I danced with him. So no, I did not tip him. I gave him a hug, um, and I took his picture, and I asked, you know, can I take his picture? And the same thing. If there's musicians and I'm taking their picture or I'm enjoying their music, then I'm going to tip them just as I would any other, you know, street musician or busker. There's also ladies um, similar to this lady that uh, this one I actually photographed in Vignales on her tobacco farm. Not a place we'll be going on this trip, but she's one of my this is one of my favorite photos. And I did not tip her because we were there visiting her farm as a group and we actually bought cigars from them. So. That's the other way that you can tip people is to actually buy some of their things. You know, if it's a if it's a musical band, 
how many times we're in a bar and a band is playing and <laughs> they come around and they say, do you want to buy my CD? Right. So uh, we've had people come on the tours with us that go home with a, a suitcase full of CDs because they bought all these, these musical CDs because they wanted to support the artists and that make great gifts back home too, you know, give them away. Um, so you can support people who are selling things and donate to, to vendors. But then there are also ladies in Havana that there's one lady in particular that I've never actually photographed her, but I know that you'll recognize her if you go on Google and you search for Cuban cigar lady. She's got flowers in her hair, this older lady, and she smokes this big giant cigar. And she just sits on the street for photos. And that's how she makes her living. So she wants a dollar or two for you to take her photo. And that's, and that's her living. So, yeah. um, so Ed says, so I, I was his tip. Yes. I mean, I love <laughs> interacting with people and I speak, you know, good enough Spanish that I can, I can get in trouble. <laughs> right. But also have a conversation with people. So I hope that answers your question about tipping Steve. And we also generally, when I go to Cuba and when our groups go, we recommend bringing some things as gifts for people as well. Because it's Cuba and they have limited supply chain, they can't get certain things like bring a bottle of aspirin or Tylenol or toothpaste and things like that, um, <clears throat> stuff they can't get. You'll get asked for shampoo on the street. I don't carry shampoo in my pocket, you know, but pens and things like that, which actually brings me to my next favorite, one of my next favorite photos, and Dan knows the story on this one. Um, we came across this people playing dominoes, which is also very common. And um, I gave this lady a pen and you can see that she's actually testing it to, to write with it because she wanted to make sure it worked because she wasn't going to let me get away without giving her another one if, her, if the pen that I gave her didn't work. So the, like these little sort of behind the scenes stuff, you know, is the memories that that you come away with with um, from Cuba. And you'll see people playing dominoes everywhere, right? You can buy sets of dominoes and things like that as well. Um, so I know that Dan is typing an answer for D. So D, I have asthma as well. Um, she says, I assume there's a lot of cigar smoking, especially in restaurants, B&Bs and other closed in. I don't think yeah. there is, there's generally not smoking in the, in the houses and in the B&Bs that keep those they keep those fairly clean and they pride themselves mm -hmm. on cleanliness. Uh, you may encounter that in the restaurants, but I have asthma as well and it hasn't bothered me. Um, definitely take your medicine with you because you may not be able to get any there. Okay? But I, I haven't had a problem with cigars. Um, yeah, and Steven is, report, is uh, asking regarding water. Uh... No, I mean, actually, we don't recommend, this is not just for Cuba, we don't recommend anywhere. drinking water from the tap anywhere you go, especially, you know, if you're, you know, besides Canada or the U.S., because they treat water differently in our countries, and they might be safe to drink for that people, but normally not for us. So we have, you know, we always have a bottled water that, you know, we we give to people that travel with us, but if you are in your own, just always use, you know, uh, always buy a bottle, a bottle of water is much safer. Yeah, and we provide, I think, one or two bottles per day to, to everybody, and we always make sure that you have bottled water. But we provide, um, like, a notebook for you when you book um, all of our tours because these are things that people ask a lot, and we give you a full Q&A with, like, pages and pages of stuff on all of these kinds of things. So do you want the serious answer? Or do you want the funny answer, Edward? He says, what's the bathroom situation in the b and <laughs> <laughs> So the, the funny answer is, yes, there are bathrooms. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean. Um, generally, every room has their own bathroom with a toilet and a sink and a shower, just like you would expect anywhere else. Yeah, we use private rooms with private uh, bathrooms. We don't use uh, casas where you have a room and then you will share the bathroom with someone else. So you know. mm -hmm. let me get my other images. Okay, so I also um, have uh, this one. Okay, so this one comes with a funny story as well because uh, this was after one of the tours that I did and my husband Rob was with me and he can attest. 
is that um, we were sitting in a square in uh, Plaza Vieja in Havana, and uh, these school kids came up with their teacher, and you can see the teacher, I don't know if you can see my my mouse here, he's in the background, and he looks like he's got a fork growing out of his head. Um, they were just taking a photo, they were probably on a school tour, and, oops, did I lose the picture? They were probably on a school tour, which they, they often do, and the uniforms are, are color-coded, right? So the younger kids wear a blue and then there's a magenta uniform and then or a, a burgundy and then the older kids so these would be like i think these would be middle school kids right middle school kids mm -hmm. and the older kids have a different color so they were taking a selfie and he was taking their photo and then so i saw this happening and i ran over and um i said let me you know take it for you i spoke spanish to them i said let me let me take it for you so i took one with his camera and his phone and then I told them to wait because I want to get another one. So they were really excited and, you know, all, as you can see by their expressions, right? So I just love that because, you know, I got to do the photo for them and he got to be in it. And it was just a fun moment for, for all of us. Um, I've also got the same ballerina that Dan <laughs> photographed. <laughs> you know, this one was going to be in there. So this was actually photographed in our, um, our casa that we were staying in after the tour. And Dan and I hired this model to um, to pose for us for a few hours. And we took her around to different places, like the spot that Dan photographed her in. We actually scouted that spot because it had the flag. And this is the balcony of our casa. And it was pretty much at dusk. So I underexposed the image. And then Dan is hiding over here. Um, Dan is hiding over here on the balcony with the flash lighting her up. So that's how we, we did that one. Um, and she's actually, yeah, she's a prima ballerina with the Cuban ba National Ballet. She's actually in Canada right now on tour. Um, so mm -hmm. for those of you that are in Canada, even Eastern Canada, um, if you're interested to know more about her and want to go see her dance, I can probably even dig that information up. So cool opportunities. Of course, the cars, right? So that's another piece of Cuba that's that's famous is the old cars because they can't get or couldn't get for years and years you'll find lots of ladas like russian cars and now you'll find hyundai's which is korean um but still still these old you know 50s chevys right um these old cars and one of our one of our tour members has come with me twice specifically because he's a car aficionado and he loves to just talk to the guys that have redone these cars and talk cars and cars for hours so I like to do things like this with panning, and this was also done on the Melicon. And then another thing that we like to do with our groups is, is to arrange things like this. So light painting and photographing at night is one of my favorite things to do. And um, we arranged for this car on one of my previous tours, and <clears throat> the, the car was there, the driver came, and we were using flashlights to light up uh, the car. And then something came by, I think it was a another car or a bus or something, and that's the streak of red light. So this one actually is a combination, I think, of four or five images that I've combined with light painting and combined it into uh, one image in Photoshop. But those are the kinds of things that we set up and arrange for as part of our tour. <coughs> okay, this is my last one, Dan, and then you got to talk, so I'm going to start coughing. I have to talk, okay. Uh... Let's go to let's go to Havana next and do some Havana pictures and just talk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then, uh, no, I was I was asking Kevin uh, regarding uh, you know bringing medicines and stuff like that and living in living those in the castle. There's no problem with that. Uh, the country is uh, super safe. Uh, you don't have any problem. You know, uh, living medicine there. As, you know, you have to use common sense and precaution, like, you know, everywhere else that you, you can try. Yeah, and um, a lot of the castles, yeah. you provide a safe in your room as well, like a yeah. little mini lock safe. So yeah. you put your a passport and things like that. Um, depends on where we go. Uh, I usually carry my passport with me or leave it in the safe in, in the room. But yes, it's it's mm -hmm. very safe. Uh, right, and the other thing, uh, like, to uh, no, there is no problem through customs. Nobody um, uh, will will ask you for you know. If you are bringing 
the amount that you need for the days that you are going to stay, you are not going to have any problem. Now, if you are trying to bring, you know, two dozens of something, that, that may be a problem, but not for yeah. normal regular use. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to change here. Okay, so there is a question also uh, regarding uh, money. And um, money, uh, yes, you cannot use US dollars to buy stuff, but you can bring US dollars, and that's basically the preferred, uh, you know, uh, currency there, and exchange it. And we will help you to exchange that currency for you to use if, if, if you need. But keep in mind that most of the uh, things are covered. Well, if you are going with us, most of the stuff are covered, so you really don't need to bring. Uh, much money, but that's part of the of the guide that um, that I mentioned before. Yeah. So um, I'll yeah. be leaving three days early, um, just because mm -hmm. of flights and things. So I'll be there, and I'll already have my money changed, and we'll know, you know, where is the best place to change money near where we're staying in Havana, and we'll take everybody there to change money on the first day. So you'll get some um, Cuban money. Have they consolidated now? Is there just one peso? Have they done away? Yeah. With yeah, but the thing is, like, when you when you exchange right now, the exchange rate is like uh, much higher. So basically, you get, I think, it's one point uh, forty pesos per dollar or something like that. I am not sure. Because like, uh, they used to have the CUPs and the CUCs, but now they've consolidated. Right. Yeah, they consolidated. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Uh, how many Airbnbs does one stay? Uh, it's one in each city. In this uh, tour, we have three different locations, so we're staying in three different Airbnbs. Um, okay, so going back to the pictures, this is in Havana. This is the Barrio Chino, and I actually wanted to make this picture for a long time. And one of those trips that I, you know, went uh, on my own. Uh, it was uh, just a couple of days, uh, but I took my camera just to go and photograph this place. So, uh, you know, I really, that this specific building always, you know, uh, attracted to me. So that's one. This is the Malecon. This is, uh, you know, best way to describe what the Malecon is. <laughs> or than with my uh, own words, and this is a sunset. And you can see, a lot of people there, a lot of activity there. So it's a very cool place to to you know hang out in the in the afternoon. You need to be careful of the tides because sometimes you know when it's high tide, those uh, you know waves can go all over the way to the other side. So I I saw some people like getting fucking wet there. <laughs> I've seen I've seen them actually come over around to where the cars are driving that goes that far. Yeah, yes, yeah, the yeah. waves crashing and people just come to hang out there in the evening. So we'll be going there one evening to photograph um, along there for sunset and so on. It's it's iconic and there's a fort right there. There's no there's no bad place to photograph in Cuba. No. <laughs> so typically, what you will find, moving to share some pictures of you know what you find in the street of Havana. So like this is one corner, and one of the things that we always do sometimes you find a place that you like for whatever reason, and we stay there and we just wait for things to happen. In this case, I was waiting for a car, you know, to go by. And obviously it's not very difficult in Havana to find a car like this going back. So it's just, you know, made a picture. Um, same here. Uh, this is across from the uh, Grand Teatro and the Capitolio. Um, so, you know, very uh, well known corner, so it was raining earlier that day. So I was uh, waiting there and, and in a picture. Um, this one was in the uh, in the last tour when we went with uh, Darlene. This is in the Paseo and El Prado. And, you know, we we're walking across the street and I saw, you know, these colorful arches there with this form and, you know, the bathroom in the back. And I thought, okay, you know, this is an interesting composition. So much um, color. Yeah? So much yeah. color everywhere. Yeah, so much color. And I got lucky. I was there probably a couple of videos, and I got lucky. That guy, you know, just, you know, came out of nowhere, walked from inside there, and, and you know, I, I made that picture. Um, 
This is a typical corner. As I told you before, you know, people gossiping in the corners. They just go there. You see, see how many things are going on here. You have <laughs> people inside the turbine. This lady probably waiting something to happen. And then this guy, a food vendor, which is probably playing dominoes here. So you see this group here is playing domino. Or he's stuck All to make this... a bat. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> So all these things happening at the same time in the same corner. So you know, uh, so you can you can photograph these things on on all day long. Um, oh, this one, it's yeah. called the shades of blue. I love that. Yeah, I I saw this card. I you know I saw this combination of blue and I was waiting for someone to walk there for a few minutes until you know this thing show up and, and i photograph it here hang, hang on to that one because that's something that i talk about with my students as well and a um, lot mm -hmm. of my students on this call is waiting like they like did you hear what he said guys he found the scene and then he waited for the lady to enter and she happens to be wearing blue look at that right mm -hmm. that's what you gotta do sometimes yeah and, and in this particular image, you also have uh, a nice things that are a little bit contrasting, complementary colors. You have the yellow also as well in the window there and the door. So I think it's, it's a very pleasing, you know, color combination there. Love it. Yeah. Um, this is a typical street of Havana, Central Havana in the afternoon, Just people walking everywhere. Uh, this uh, you get this type of response when you shoot with a zoom because it gives like a you know a compressed look, and that's why you see like you know uh, all the people are uh, close together, but in reality you see that like maybe three four blocks uh, you know there. So, uh, but this is another typical scene in in Havana. Kids playing soccer with you know what they have. Um, this was uh, on the first time I went there. You see now the, the Capitolio is already um, uh, um, you know the Capitolio was under renovation. Now the renovation is, is, is done. Uh, the this guy, the guy that was driving me on the on the you know convertible car, we we always go on the car and he you know happened to use this uh, hat and you know I say okay he looks Cuban right <laughs> I am reflecting here on, on his glasses. Uh Eddie if uh, while you are waiting at the scene for someone to come by for a photo are you standing sitting on a stool or the core or what? Well it depends uh everything <laughs> all all of the above uh like for example, I can tell you, uh, I don't know if my friend George is here, but uh, like uh, normally on that scene there, I stay there for a couple of minutes, right? So I'm waiting for someone to happen. Uh, if I am on a tour, I don't have much time. If I am by myself, maybe I have more time. Uh, but like, for example, one of the things that I did, you know, a couple of times is uh, with my friend George, we were in Morocco, we wanted to photograph this place. Uh, and we, you know, saw this place in the morning and said, hmm, this is a nice, uh, you know, good for the night. And there was to, it used to, we were lucky, there was a cafe across the street. So we went there and we asked for a table uh, there. We put our tripods and we stayed there like 22 hours drinking tea uh, until we got the shot that we wanted. So it, it, it really depends, you know, uh, it's a different combination of, I actually have an example to show her. Oh, I I think I have a picture of the same guy. No, this is not. You you asked me yesterday to put it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's why. <laughs> right, I'm like I recognize him. <laughs> yeah. So this is the uh, uh, butcher there in the in the in in Havana, and as you can see, you know, people is very welcoming. Yeah, uh, you just just approach this guy. You you know. Uh, talk to him uh, because I was interested really in what he was doing. 
And then after a few minutes, I asked him for a photo and, you know, he said, yes, of course you can, you can take my picture. Let me address the language thing as well, because yeah. I mean, Dan obviously speaks Spanish and, and I speak pretty good Spanish, but we also have a local guide with us and Carlos will be with me when we're, we're touring. Um, so between Carlos and I, you know, there's somebody there to help translate for you. Also, you know, in like in the market, for example, where that guy was, we all went together. So they knew we were all there and nobody asked for money. I don't think I have ever. And I'm trying to think really hard because I've been to Cuba four times. And I told Dan, I have 11,000 images of Cuba yesterday. And I do not think I have ever been declined anybody for me to take their mm -hmm. photo ever in Cuba, ever. Yeah. And, and going back to uh, to you know what Darlene uh, said before, uh, tipping it, it depends. I mean that's in general, right? When I am traveling, if I am just you know if I found these guys and I'm shooting them from across the streets, if I'm not going to tip them. If I stop someone and I ask them to take their portrait and they spend a couple of minutes with me. Uh, because I specifically ask them, most likely I will keep that person. Exactly. And then there are other situations when we, uh, as Arlene said before, we arrange photo shoots. Okay. So we are paying the models to be there with us. Like, for example, uh, like the ballerinas and stuff like that. In that case, that people get paid. So you, you know, if you're in the tour, you don't have to compensate them. But that's, that's the way it's, it's, it's different, right? So this is uh, also people in, in the street of Havana at night. Uh, I'm going to start to show some uh, car pictures. People like, you know, like cars. Um, can you tip in dollars? Yes, you can tip in dollars. No problem with that. Uh, but they I would like, recommend they, they you to do it on the local money. Yeah, yeah they, they like foreign money and they have no problem with that. But you can also, you'll be getting local money, like we'll change it to local yeah. Either they'll take either. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, here I found these cards, like you know, uh, very color coordinated. Um, it took that image. Um, this guy was waiting for his uh, passengers to drive it around, and like you know, he did a very comfortable seat on the trunk of the car <laughs> there. And then I always, uh, one of the things that I do when I travel, I, I try to shoot combination of things, right? Because then it helps it to make a story if I am putting something together. So I tend to shoot details a lot. Uh, Darlene, for example, she likes to put a lot of food. I should, you know, photograph more food. I normally don't do it much often, but I need to do it. But Darlene, you're always going to be seeing her taking food. But I do details like this, right? Because then it helped me. Here's another example. Food. When you're finished with the cars, let me show some Cuban food because yeah. that's a question people always ask is, how is the food? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, and this was again, you know, this one, I probably stay here yeah, probably half an hour in this uh, scene because it was fun, you know, there was these guys, you know, playing soccer there. I mean, I like it there and, you know, I, I have a bunch of images from there. And in this case, the car was coming and, you know, I was there. And we will show two more pictures that uh, I want to show the difference that you can make using different, you know, uh, zoom ranges. There is a question there regarding how much, uh, I mean, how much here we should bring and what the hell Like, for example, in this uh, example here, I took this image of a car in Havana with a white angle lens. You know, I like it, the combination of the colors, and you can see this, and it's Havana, right? Uh, but then, then, you know, you can do a zoom uh, with a, you know, longer lens, and you can have something, you know, more in detail like this, but you still can see the context that you're still on the same place. And again, having different variety of images it actually you know, helps you to build a, a story. So, okay. do you want that to show some of the full images? 
Yeah. And in terms of your question, Kevin, about how much to bring, um, I would say bring enough, but not too much. And what that means is bring enough to make sure that, you know, you've got covered. Um, I usually bring like a sort of a multi-purpose zoom lens, which is my Fuji 18 to 135. Um, and then I usually bring um, my camera, this one here, which is like my little street camera, my X100F, which has a wide lens on it. And I may bring my infrared one next time, but I also always bring a tripod. So I bring only enough because Dan Dan is the opposite of me. Dan likes to bring everything in the kitchen sink. Way <laughs> and, too much. And then he gets stopped by customs because he has too much stuff. So I bring what I need and I know that I can carry it, right? So that's the piece of that is nobody's going to be carrying your, your gear for you. Um, you can leave stuff in the casas during the day. So, you know, if you don't have, you don't have to bring all your gear with you all the time. That's totally fine. It's all safe. Um, but don't bring any more than, you know, if you can't carry your bag from one place to the next, then that's, that's too much. Nope, that answers that. So, Dara, I just wanted to tell you, I don't know if you noticed, but Carlos, uh, just showing me the call. Oh, okay, cool. Let him in. Yeah, he's, he's him. So, you, Carlos is muted, and he is. Hey! Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Oh. <laughs> Gracias. Thank you very much. Yeah, so Carlos, uh, for you guys, he's going to help us probably to answer some of the questions. Carlos is uh, our guide. You know, when, when we go there, he's a fantastic uh, guy. He helps us to arrange, you know, most of the tools that we do. And he's with us, you know, all the time, you know, taking care of us, uh, you know, through all the tools. So uh, we invited him because, uh, you know, he, uh, he might provide some valuable information. And you could see like his smiley face and uh, oh should I, <laughs> should I show that picture Dan what picture are you going on? what picture what? oh Carla you're in trouble you know the one I'm going to where is it where is it I have to share my screen um while you are answering some questions I'm going to share some different pictures but uh there's Carlos doing his best imitation of a ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> you, you knew this one was coming, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So do you want to... I do, uh, I do. There's a question <laughs> in, the, in, in here from Edward Carlos about internet. Do you want to maybe tell him how... He says, how is the internet access like? And he's uh, American. So. Yeah. So in internet... Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. So internet is way better than even when you came here um, uh, two years ago, two or three years ago, right? Three. Like, like, three years ago. Yeah, it's going to be Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so internet is way better. Uh, actually, there are SIM cards now. Where uh, These SIM cards, you can free uh, pay for them online so from the us from everywhere you can prepay uh these sim cards and you can pick them up here in cuba with the oh, sim cards too uh usually i think it's 36 dollars but that will give you like eight eight gigabytes of, of 4g connection and it's pretty decent usually what we do guys is i get one of those and then i have oh yeah remember the device carlos um we'll yep. put it the device and then it actually broadcasts internet for everybody so even while we're on the bus um you you'll have you'll have internet um if you're canadian sure. your phone will work in cuba no problem your bank cards should work your credit card should work if you're american generally none of those things work unless you do like what carlos said and just swap out the sim card so yeah i totally forgot about the device <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, yeah we will, we, that's great because I'll put that in the device for sure. So then everybody will have internet access. Um, so I just want to show some food because one of the questions that we get asked a lot or that I get asked a lot and people say, well, I went to Cuba and the food was bad. And my comment is that you went to the wrong place because I have never had bad food in Cuba. Um, and it has to do with if you go to the resorts, generally it's all mass produced, you know, buffets, all these things. But the places that we're staying, um, you know, it doesn't get any fresher than this, right? So you have fresh 
tropical fruits. You have, you know, these kinds of things are growing on the island. This is a typical breakfast every day. Somebody asked me about uh, breakfast and you'll get a fruit plate, you'll get toast, and you'll get eggs, coffee, and juice. <coughs> That's breakfast. All right, first coconuts. Um, this drink, one of our ladies on the tour was enjoying, probably has some rum in her coconut. <laughs> <laughs> Very common to have a cocktail. Anne, hey, Anne, he's here with <laughs> us. So this, we stopped somewhere along the way and, and decided to buy some bananas from this man. Okay, so there's never a lack of, of fresh fruit and things. And I just put this one in there because, you know, how often do you see a guy going down the street with a cake on a bicycle? And of course, <laughs> there's rum, you know, mojitos this is a very common drink. There's Havana Club. Um, if you have time or if we have time, we may go to the rum factory. There's also a chocolate place in Havana that we usually stop that has amazing chocolates. And then the actual food that you'll get in the restaurants and things. Um, this one, uh, what is this one called again, Carlos? Tostone, tostones, tostones. Tostones rellenos. Tostones yeah. rellenos. Yeah. Platanos. It's a stuffed plantain with some meat on top. It's yep. very delicious. <laughs> yep. Fresh produce. Very nice. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing one thing uh, we have in Cuba a lot is, is fresh and organic because we don't have the resources to uh, maintain the food for a long time in, in big freezers or something like that. And we don't have the chemicals to produce in mass. So, exactly. uh, yeah, yeah. So this is a really typical meal. This is probably like a ropa vieja, which literally translates to old clothes, but it's like a stewed beef with rice. <coughs> really. Hey, you guys talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's just okay. so. Yeah, this is some some of the of the of the examples of this. Um, Edward is asking if the UK uh, credit cards or bank cards will work in Cuba. I am not sure how that comes. Do you know? I know American cards will not work. But, yes. Uh, what yeah. about from UK? Yes, they do work. Although I recommend okay. to bring cash uh, because because for example for example sometimes it's limited the amount of cash you can get from an ATM or from a bank. And sometimes it's not enough. Although these kind of trips, they have most of the meals included or all the meals included. And mm -hmm. uh, but but if you want to buy things, souvenirs, uh, rum, cigars, whatever you want to buy, uh, sometimes the amount of cash you can get from an ATM or from a bank is limited. So usually in Havana you can get more, but in in mm -hmm. uh, uh, other other destinations uh, is uncertain. So I recommend to bring uh, cash. Right. Okay. Hey, Kai. American, <laughs> American yeah. cars. Thank you for the comment, Kai. No, Americans, I know it doesn't, it doesn't, you can, you cannot use that. But dollars are widely accepted, right? Well, not widely accepted. We, we have to exchange the dollars there in order to, um, you know, to use the local, the local currency. Yeah. I put this one because, oh, sorry, guys, go. No, no, about, about the dollars um, and, and euros and GBP and whatever, any uh, foreign mm -hmm. uh, currency. So the official exchange rate is low. So compared to uh, alternative market exchange rate, which is, uh, it depends, it depends. It, it goes up and down. It's just like the stock market. Uh, inflation is crazy. It's around six, 600% right now, which is uh, it's not bad for the travelers because uh, now their currency has more value, right? So back in the time, one dollar used to be twenty-five Cuban pesos. Right now, right now, exactly right now, it's one hundred fifty-five pesos, one dollar. Right. So the government, the government gave, is giving right now an an official, extra official exchange rate in the exchange rate places of one hundred twenty, but still way below the alternative market. And I can provide you. Uh, a safe way to exchange at the alternative market exchange rates. Mm -hmm. And just to answer Edwards as well, um, no, you can't use cards generally, 
uh, your American cards won't work anywhere pretty much because they don't, the banks, American banks don't connect. So you need to bring cash for everything. Um, all your meals are included or mostly included. The only thing you need to pay for is purchases, personal purchases and alcoholic beverages. Um, so if you want to get a massage, you want to buy some souvenirs, um, and yes, you can bring cigars back to the U.S. I think there's a limit or something, but you would need to budget how much and bring cash with you for those things. Yep. Mm -hmm. the, the, yep. Issue is, the issue is, Ed, that you can't legally, as an American, support the Cuban economy. So you, you can't have that on your, your visa. They won't process it through American uh, banks. So this one here, um, this image, um, this is one of my favorite things and Dan's favorite things. It's flan. Every time for dessert in Cuba is flan. <laughs> you are killing me now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I show these because like this is a very typical meal, right? Again, the ropa vieja with plantains, fried mm -hmm. plantains, and it's really tasty. So the thing is, there just is not a lot of spices in Cuba. Um, one thing that you can actually pack in your bag is a pepper shaker and bring your own pepper if you want pepper, because it's often not on the tables. And if you bring your casa owners a, a shaker, a giant shaker of pepper, they would love you to pieces. Right? Yeah, true. Uh, true. <laughs> All right. So question about um, seafood. Did you answer that one, Dan? Somebody said yes, they do seafood. It's not a problem. Yeah. I know I had this up on the screen with the lobster and the fish. Partly, I just want to show that because, you know, there is fresh seafood for those that enjoy it. And then there's also basic things like French fries. And this is a sloppy joe, right? So, you know, really, really basic things. Um, this one was a group meal that we had at one of the casas. And it's very typical. You'll get a grilled chicken or fish or something like that um, or pork with rice and beans. Uh, there's very typical, right? So... No, there is no bad food in Cuba that I have seen anyways. So I want to share a little bit of Trinidad. You guys want to go to Trinidad? And I'm going to go through some of these. Trinidad. I'm going to go through some of these pretty quickly just to kind of show you. Trinidad is very colonial. Um, the, it's very colorful. It's got the cobblestone streets. The homes and the buildings are very colorful. I think this is actually inside one of the casas. Just to give you an idea, yes. you know, I mean, the, the homes are very nice. And some of the ones we stay have multiple rooms. Like they're not just, okay, you're there by yourself. And um, in most cases, if we're staying separately, like in, um, do you know the one we're staying? Oh, did we lose Carlos? Um, no, Carlos is there. Oh, do you know the one we're staying in Trinidad? The Where, where we stayed last time, we were across the road from each other. So I'm always there to help if you need help translating to speak to your, your host because not all the hosts speak English, okay? This is a very famous square in Trinidad. The thing I also love about it is the lighting. Uh, I think we are staying in we. Uh, I hope, I, you know, you. I, I'm, we are staying in the same one, I guess. Casa Jose, okay. they have enough room for all of us. Oh, perfect, yeah. So we'll all be in the same casa. But the, the light that you find in, in Havana and also here in Trinidad. I just, I love the light and the end of the day and you get this, this look at this storm coming over the mountains and this beautiful light and so on in these little alleyways and crevices. Um, this is one guy, you've not seen this one, Dan, you're gonna have FOMO, but this was one that uh, I saw a few years ago in Trinidad, he's an artist and he makes these carvings out of old like windows and doors. You can see behind him and he will take a photo like he's doing here and then make it into a piece of art. And we watched him work for quite a while and doing this piece of work. And his pieces, honestly, from what I remember, were not that expensive. I think it was like $500 American or something. And you can literally order one from him. He gets like orders and, and people will, will have it shipped to them. So you meet these kinds of people and artists in, in Trinidad. There's an artist community there, right? Um, musicians, everywhere we go, you're going to see and hear music, right? In the bars, on the street. So these guys, look, CD, right? They have a CD, can you see, right? $10, buy a CD, right? So um, dancers as well. 
as another artist. Okay, so a lot of times what I bring home is art, right? I have a couple of large paintings that I bought in Cuba that I still need to get framed, by the way. So reminding myself to do that. And I'm just going to flip through some of the cars and things that Dan shared, right? So I love to go out at night and we, we are out class blue hour several times. And it's always good to, you know, have your tripod. Um, this was another light painting one that I did. And I literally lit up the headlights with the cell phone. Rob was doing that for me. And just cars, 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 right? You can't get enough. Uh, this instance and this year, we took a couple of the cars. We paid these guys to take us to the beach near Trinidad. And we got, we were rewarded with a spectacular sunset. Uh, there's the one I showed you earlier. There's one we did uh, three years ago with Dan was doing the light painting on this one. And I came across this one uh, yesterday when I was going through my images, but look at the light on the guy's face. So something is reflecting maybe off of his mirror or something to light up his face. Cause I didn't do that in, in post-processing. And then of course you've got horses wandering through town and buggies and it's just, it's just, you know, quaint, right? Of course we can have cocktails. This one is the one I actually took several years ago on my cell phone and I did a little um, technique on it on my cell phone. It's just kind of one of my favorites because of the textures. People, I like photographing people and just a guy sitting on a bike taxi, you know, like people don't have any problem for you to take their picture. More dominoes, right? This is the main square in Trinidad and at night they have this uh, dance performance. So we can go to that and it's you know free. You could have cocktails, sit outside and watch the dancers. People selling stuff on the street. Um, this guy sold me a bag of meringues, which is like the sweetened egg white. Um, I think I paid him a dollar and he gave me like six or something. <clears throat> so I ended up giving them away to kids. A lady that's just sitting inside her door and I took her picture. You know, I didn't tip her. I just had a conversation with her. So you don't necessarily always have to tip people. Mm -hmm. the, the thing with tipping and giving money is that it creates a culture of people to ask for money and beg for money. And I've seen that occur in lots of countries. And in Nicaragua, for example, they actually discourage it and they tell you not to give people money, um, especially if they're begging, especially if they're children. Um, and the case is also generally true in Cuba is that there's very few homeless people. People are are given, you know, at home, they're given food. Yes, they're very poor um, and you can give them something to help them out, but it creates this culture of expecting tourists to give them money. So it's kind of a dangerous precedent. But if you want to tip, um, the question that Stephen had was, you know, if if I was posing somebody, like for example, I met this lady on a walk and I was taking her picture and a guy came out that turned out he was in a band um, that we had seen the night before. So I ended up donating, uh, I gave her a couple of dollars and this was his mother, right? The colors, like I just love the colors. I know you have the same, mm -hmm. the same guy. Yep. Again, yep. playing the dominoes. So here's the domino game and there's our whole group, right? So you can see, look at the photographers and the paparazzi around them and they have they have absolutely no problem with it yeah they have absolutely no problem this is a photo of uh, this man i took in 2014 this is in 2015 you see he's sitting in the same doorway and now our tour members are photographing him and i know dan has a picture of him as well so that's how he makes his money so him i do tip right and just to show you some other scenes you know like there are beaches and if we have an opportunity, we'll take you out to the beach near Trinidad. It's a beautiful place, right? Cigars, right? like this is your Carlos's friend. I love this picture. Yeah, he's still around. Uh, uh, is he there? <laughs> we did a rum tasting and he was smoking the cigar and, and the light was nice. So I had him to pose for me there, right? I just like this photo because we're on a rooftop in Trinidad photographing the sunset over the town. And you notice everybody's got a cocktail in their hand. Ruth is very serious about drinking her cocktail. Right? It doesn't get any better than that guy. I'll show you my picture of, of that place. Yeah, you can see everybody's lined up. We got everybody there. And I think I lent my tripod to somebody. Um, 
and they're all having cocktails while they're photographing. It doesn't get any better than that. Okay. Uh, this is Ruth. She brought little Canadian pins, and she was giving them to all the kids. So I took her picture with the kids. And Francie decided she was going to play chess. I attempted uh, as well in uh, in one of the in Camaway when we were doing Easter tour, and I didn't fare so good. <laughs> uh, Steven says, "If I buy a CD, will it play?" Yes, it's a regular music CD, Steven. Absolutely, I have tons of them. Right. Okay. All right. Do you want to do some of yours? That was Trinidad. I've got more CDs. Yeah, I will. I will. I will um, show some of Trinidad. Yeah. These were in the in the subject there. Um, so that rooftop where Berlin was going, where we were drinking mojitos and taking pictures, this is what we were doing from there. So that was the behind the scenes. This is the final result, right? Um, another thing, this is actually sometimes, uh, this is from the rooftop of our casa. So this is literally the place where we are staying uh, in Trinidad. And, you turn around the corner, you walk two blocks, and you are in the middle of, you know, uh, the town. So it's very well located. And I just made this picture, I think, uh, you know, before uh, we went out. And uh, that night, I went there with a group of people, and we made, you know, these pictures there. Um, this is uh, basically in Trinidad, we were walking, and I found, like, a window. Some people, you know, some... Uh, people's house, and I guess they are making cuts there. And I thought it was a very interesting composition. And I made this image through the window, basically shooting from, from the outside, right? Um, this is a walk that we did in the afternoon. Uh, I really like this image because if you see on the, on the wall, yeah, there is this, you know, patch of light there. Uh, oh, yeah. The guy on the garage is, you know, reflecting there. Yeah. Right, so it's actually uh, really, really cool. And also, uh, the guy who is uh, on the back, uh, similar to the shot that Darlene showed before, there is some sort of, you know, light on, on her face, on, her, on his face. Uh, this is the same guy that Darlene showed before, when we were shooting, you know, everyone, uh, this uh, domino gate. So I got this image from, from, from that, from there. Um, we were walking also in an afternoon, uh, there we find this guy, you know, peeking through a window I and mean, then stay there for a few minutes. Some people, you know, uh, were, you know, playing with him and, you know, I was, you know, take my uh, shot. Uh, colors, you know, you can always try to look for colors, textures, things like that. You will find a lot of these things you can do if it's your thing. But again, uh, this variety of different things, it helps a lot to, you know, tell, uh, tell a story, right? Um, this was early morning. There are two images, like, uh, okay. So, uh, we have, so let me, on a typical tour, we have things that we are, you know, planning. So we have typically a uh, shoot in the morning, and uh, then we go back for, you know, we have lunch, we probably have one or two hours for rest, and then we go back in the afternoon. But uh, on top of that, sometimes we do things that are, you know, not in the program. Like, for example, I like to go early in the morning, and sometimes before we have uh, breakfast, I just go out and I find things on the street, like, you know, in this case, this, and in this case, this, and, you know, people, Go with me if you are up to, you know, uh, if you want to wake up early or if you want to stay late, right? So, you know, we, we do those kind of things that are not on the regular program that will help also to get, you know, more image for you. And uh, everything is optional too, you know, even if there's something in the program, um, we're going to go and do this thing. <clears throat> as long as we're not moving to a new city, if yeah. you're tired, not feeling well or whatever, and often, you know, that comes up too. People, am I going to get sick? Am I going to need to be close to the toilet? You know, these kinds of things. Um, as long as you follow sort of our precautions and avoid things like, you know, lettuce, ice in your drinks, depending on where we're at, um, 
you'll be fine. I, I rarely honestly get stomach sick in Cuba. I rarely do. Um, India is another matter, <laughs> but um, <laughs> as long as you, you know, and, and know your own body, right? If you need to rest, then rest, right? So if you want to skip out on, on one thing, stay at the casa and rest if you have to rest and we'll catch up with you or you can catch up with us later. So just want to. Yeah, Eddie, maybe uh, I think you want to answer this question. Eddie is asking if uh, we have done advanced editing on these pictures or I, I will say, uh, Eddie, that if you go on a tour with us, you will come back with great images and a better photographer for sure. Yeah. But so, that lady is always, you know, uh, she's asking about she, editing. You know, yeah. She's asking about editing on them. So uh, yeah. I, I was debating actually bringing my computer or not. But if you bring a laptop, we can even talk about that, you know, during some downtimes, often if there's a rest period in a casa or something, or sometimes even on the bus, um, depending on, you know, what size of a vehicle we have, if we have a small group. We'll talk about those kinds of things in between locations. You know, when we're driving from one place to the next, um, we'll cover camera settings or questions about this or that. And most of the images you're seeing have some post processing, ED. Um, I wouldn't call it advanced, though. Okay? All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, Kevin says, is there a significant amount of time or activities around sand? No, no. No. <laughs> most of it is true. No. Most no, most of it is city. Um, if we do visit a beach, it might just be once. Yeah, if there is one. But yeah, typically yeah. not sand. No. Yeah. Edward. I don't want to miss out. Yeah. He's got <laughs> not like me. Oh. Like uh, you have FOMO. <laughs> Unless you're familiar with that one, Ed. FOMO means the fear of missing out. If you do the letters, it's <laughs> and dad has it big time. Um, he's always yeah. afraid of missing out and I missed out on Bhutan that Dan just did. So, um, we totally understand that. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, there, there's also has to be a balance between doing everything and, you know, missing out because you end up getting sick or, you know, so right. pace yourself. Right. He's like Peter too. Yeah. Peter wants to do everything. Yeah. You have more of Trinidad. So I guess, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if you want to share a, a, I got seen for you. Uh, image there. Um, we can start like, you know, maybe taking questions. We are like uh, over an hour now. So show some San Fuegos because we haven't really talked about yeah. that. So it's, yeah. it's, um, it's a lesser known city. It's a bit more sort of modern. Um, there's a main sort of square. This one was actually taken at night. And I was using a tripod and I'm looking at the exposure on this one. This was a 15 second exposure. Uh, I don't know if you can see or not, but there's actually stars in the sky here, right? It's strange. Yeah. And there are strange. Yeah. Stream there. And the guy showed up and was going to leave with his car while I'm doing the exposure. And, and I asked him, I'm like, please, please don't take your car. So he waited with me and then I showed him the photo and then, and then he drove away. So. Um, people are really accommodating in Cuba, like really accommodating. Right? That's that same church that's in the background here. So this is the main square in Cienfuegos. Right? Uh, took a lot of shots to get this one, get the right angle and to get the birds. This is sort of the tower on the other end of the park. And I actually did go up in the tower one time. Right? Sometimes it's open, sometimes it's not. But just to give you an idea of some of the architecture, this is inside that tower building. Okay. Some of the architecture in San Fuego. So see a kind of more, it's more art deco, I would say, in San Fuego. Uh, there's mm -hmm. one main street with the shopping. There's there's a Prada street sort of in the middle. This is the government building. And of course, lots of cars. So in answer to your question about processing EDs, some of these I've done, I've given them um, like an antique look, like a faded out look on purpose. Okay, so I've done the processing to to create that effect. So, so many cars. <laughs> you are getting the I'm idea. I'm going to ask, uh, there is a, a question from Leslie asking if we spend time talking about the history, culture, and challenge of Cuba. Um, I would say, uh, Yes, this is a it's, it's a photography tour, but you know we understand the importance of you know know all those things, and that's why 
We have a local guide throughout the whole tour, which is Carlos, you know, that is here with us. And he's, you know, very, you know, passionate about his country. He knows a lot about the culture. And the way we organize, we try to organize this is like, if we are going to visit a place, we try to give background information of the place before we arrive to the place. So once we are there, we can spend time doing, you know, photography. Uh, so, and if you want at that point, if you want to, you know, know more and spend more time with uh, Carlos, he, you can certainly do that. That's why we have a local guy here for uh, helping us with that. Yeah. And also like when we're traveling, he will be explaining things like that, you know, oh, yeah. about agriculture, school, you know, all of these kinds of things. I stopped at this one because this is a, a famous musician, Benny More, and they've got a statue of him in the middle of the, the main street in San Fuegos. And um, you can pick up his music CDs as well. I've got a couple of his, his music is a very famous thing. Um, so yes, part of the culture, um, this is the main sort of commercial street. Last time we visited one of the stores where Cubans go to shop and it's very different than where the tourists go to shop. How do I spell that? Dan's gonna type it for you, okay? There's the, there's the there's the younger school kids, okay? So you see they wear sort of the burgundy uniforms and the high school students wear like a navy and the middle school is is a gold. So you could tell sort of how old the kids are, but they all wear uniforms, right? Um, you know, professional ladies wearing a suit. This is in the park. These guys are obviously, these are picking up the garbage, okay? Habanos, right? So cigar store, very famous in in San Fuegos. You find them in Havana as well. And this is just so typical. Again, people sitting, hanging out on the bench. Um, you'll hear, you know, tranquilo, tranquilo. It's like chill out, chill out. Uh, the Latino culture in in pretty much every Latino country that I've been to is very laid back, right? So we talk about Cuba time. You know, if you're in a hurry to get something. No, no, no. Tranquilo. <laughs> it's Cuba time. It's going to happen when it happens, right, Dan? Yeah. Another opportunity for panning. Okay? Um, bike taxis are very common. We use them sometimes as well, and they're kind of fun to get around. Okay? Guys using uh, horse and buggies are very common, even in the cities. I think this is actually Cienfuegos, the, the guy, isn't it? I think that's him. They still have pay phones on the street. <laughs> I took this one and I have this example because when we were walking through St. Fuegos last time, one of the things people will always ask me is what, what do I look for? And I look for light. Okay. So this is one of the things that grabbed my attention because of the texture and the light on this building. This is an old theater. In Sin Fuegos, that's absolutely amazing. We go in, we went in, had a tour. No shows, unfortunately, but you can just see, like, look at the old seats, right? Amazing. Then there's this place, uh, the Palacio, which is built by basically a rich guy. Um, oh, this might be the Yacht Club. That's the Yacht Club in Sin Fuegos. Um, but then there's the Palacio, which is kind of this weird moroccan style building when we go there we have a drink <coughs> talk about this one down i'm gonna cough yeah this is uh like a palace there where we we go and you can have a drink in the afternoon that is a really cool place i mean it seems like from from a totally different place um kevin Yes, if you need to rest in the morning, we can, you can catch up with us later. None of the activities that we do are mandatory unless we are moving from city to city. Obviously you have to travel, it's a travel there, right? But let's say we are three or four days in, in Havana, we have, you know, activities in the afternoon or in the morning, you can actually, uh, you know, um, join or decide not to join for, for those activities it's totally up to you exactly uh, mm -hmm. yeah uh, how much help do you give in terms of composition settings well we are there to help you right so as much as we can 
Uh, it's not a workshop in the sense that you know, there is no formal teaching, but our goal is for you guys to come up with as many images as, as you can. So yeah, we are going to be there to help you. And the link will be there to help you. Yeah. yeah, and currently we only have four people registered in the group. So <clears throat> I'd love to have a couple of more, but it's going to be a small group. And one mm -hmm. of those people yeah. is actually um, a non-photographer. She's a spouse. So really we only have three right now. And three of those have traveled with me before. So they, they know me. Um, Gay's traveled with me multiple times as has Linny. So, and she's coming from Miami. So um, in terms of help, when we're doing something like this, for example, so this is um, all the group lined up on, on the, um, we're at the Yacht Club in San Fuegos photographing the sunset, okay? So everybody's lined up and I wouldn't, I didn't have my tripod set up there because I've photographed that a million times. I'm there to help you guys, right? Often I'm lending my tripod to people if they don't have one and that kind of thing. Um, so I go around and I just check on everybody and see how they're doing. And so it's your job um, as a participant to ask if you need help or to say, hey, can you look at my composition while you're making the picture and suggest something for me? <clears throat> okay. So it starts and leaves in Havana. So it's your job to yeah. get to Havana, not to Miami. So there's no flight from Miami included in the tour. You have to get all the way to Havana. But Dan lives in Miami and, and he can give you suggestions of, you know, how to get there. If you connect through Miami, I'm in Canada. And if you have questions about getting there from Canada, I have a travel agent that can help out with that, um, who's Canadian. And we um, there's no current flights from Canada to Havana. So I have to fly into Veradero, which is about two and a half hours away from Havana. And we are going to arrange a driver to pick um, myself up and the other lady that's coming from Canada. So if you're coming from Canada, you just get a little drive across the country before you start. So it's not too bad. Great. It's <laughs> great. It's great. You know, you might even get picked up by a classic car. So, you know, you got car and driver for, to yourself for two and a half hours. <laughs> So, so uh, we, we start the 21 of February and it goes until March 1st. And then we have the extension from March 1st to March 5th. So the extension, basically, we're going to concentrate in Havana. I'm going to join that link for the extension. So whoever is going and staying uh, will, you know, and meet me as well. Uh, so basically, that's uh, what we're doing. The extension will be treated a little bit more like a workshop. We will have more time for specific, you know, uh, sessions in the morning, photography sessions, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, free of range. And uh, that will give the opportunity to, you know, have more on hands teaching on those. So I've, I've switched over to Havana images now and just finish up. Um, mm -hmm. And I show these ones because we often, you know, do a rooftop shoot at some point. And I'm showing sort of the <clears throat> opposite or dichotomy, if you will, of the architecture and things in Havana specifically mm -hmm. when you throughout Cuba is you'll see beautiful restored buildings like this hotel. And then you'll see ones like this where people actually still live there. Right. Anywhere else in the world, this would be condemned. Like I watched people run across these little balconies and these little walkways, praying that they would hold them up because, you know, the, some of them don't have running water. Um, some of them don't have of uh, electricity sometimes. Um, and it's another question we get as well. And we asked Carlos about that. <laughs> and he says, he says, um, the power is back to normal and it shouldn't be any issues because they had power issues earlier in the year after the hurricane, but it's back to normal, right? Laundry, everybody's photographer's favorite. Everybody likes the laundry and uh, Cubans love to hang their laundry out, right? Extension is from March uh, 1st to March 5th. I'm going to put, uh, I think I put the link a couple of times. I'm going to put the, the link of the website uh, one more time. Yeah, and when, um, well, when the, the recording for this will be available as well, and we'll send an email to watch it. 
and yeah. the, link mm -hmm. to the tour information thing. So again, just some of the, this is actually a restaurant upstairs where we, we take you guys to have dinner in usually in Havana. So we go and we photograph this beautiful staircase and you'll notice that the statue has no head. This is from 2015. And the last time we went there, now it has a head. So and the head, the head makes no sense. It's like a man statue head on a woman's body. But this is what they do in Cuba. They fix things with duct tape and glue and bondo, you know. This is inside one of the museums of the generals in one of the squares. Uh, just a building that I got up inside of another museum. But you could see, like, you see the buildings that have been restored and are in this type of condition and the care that's gone into them. And you can imagine, you know, what the whole city was like before that. It's just grandeur, right? This is inside the um, the theater, the National Theater, where the ballet happens, right? I'm using a fisheye lens here. We took a tour inside. I was not supposed to use a tripod, but I did anyways. I got in trouble, I think. Yeah. Oh, uh, Kevin, if you say, if you can join the tour all the way through and stay through the extension, uh, that's something that, you know, if, if you send us an email, we have to see how the logistics will work because if we are not in Havana, yeah, I don't. Uh, you know, today we have a, a, a way for you to get to either Cienfuegos or or uh, uh -huh. three days. You yeah. could join just the extension if you wanted to just come to Havana for three days. Yeah. Do that, yeah. and then you would get a taste of Cuba and see what it's like. And then if you like it and um, feeling like you're up to it, then you could do the full tour the following year. Maybe that's mm -hmm. an idea. Yeah. <clears throat> Just some of the things at night, um, this square was all lit up. They were lighting up the church. So I've um, never seen it done again. Dan has FOMO. There's the Melicon. You can see the waves crashing. Hey, the guys on the Melicon. People just come and hang out. There, you can see the big splash on that one. This is across the bay um, at the fort. So we're actually looking back at the Melicon and Havana. There, you can see a big wave there. It's a good one, hey? Mm -hmm. This is a different time we photographed uh, one of my other tours. We photographed from the opposite side at the fort. You can see the cannons. Bike taxis, very common. Some other modes of transportation. Cocoa taxis, we've taken those. Panning, I love to do panning. And this is a technique that I can teach as well. So how to do panning if you've never done this thing. Okay. Cars, cars. This one, look at the car, you guys. What's on top? <laughs> a mattress, right? You will see all kinds of crazy stuff in Cuba. Don't be surprised. You'll see all kinds of things. I've seen a rat on the top of a dog. I've seen, uh, you know, a guy with a cake. I saw a guy with an owl. Uh, we always do a classic car tour of Havana, so we rent the convertibles and we take a tour around the city so that you can see some of the stuff that's outside of Old Havana. So we do most of the walking inside Old Havana, and then we take you on a car tour and we get to see a little bit more. So that's a great way to see the city. So I think I'm coming to the end of my slides. Oh, this guy. Okay, so here's another one, 2014. I photographed this guy, um, and I think I did give him some some tip at the time. So this was my first time to Cuba, 2014. And then guess what? We ran into him uh, 2020. So six years later, there he is. And I was able to find the picture I took of him, because I think I had it somewhere on my website, and show it to him. And he says he remembers, but... I don't know, but he forgets how old he is. I think, I don't know. He's in his eighties. I don't know, maybe nineties, but you know, same, probably sitting on the same park bench that I saw him six years ago. Right. Carlos might know. <laughs> yeah. And just people, right? So I'm a people photographer. I love photographing people and faces, people doing things. Um, this little girl was, was talking to her mom and her aunt, and I was there taking pictures, and I asked her mom if it was okay, 
And then she found out that her aunt was having a baby. So she's got the sonogram of her new little niece or nephew or cousin, I guess it would be. These guys just crack me up. Like, look at these dogs with the tongue hanging out. They look like two old men sitting there. Musicians. Oh, I think we're going to see Anne again. No, oh, she has a picture with her with this guy. There's the school kids in the burgundy uniforms. And some outdoor stuff at night. It does rain sometimes. I got caught in this one, but I took the opportunity to take pictures. My camera is waterproof. Very, very rare on the on the time that we got. Yeah, very rare. Yeah. Look at this little girl. Okay. The laundry, the balconies. And there's one that I took from my balcony. This was actually from the castle that I was staying at. Again, street activities. Everything happens on the street. This is out the Casa window, so where we were staying in Old Havana last time. Look out, and this is what I see. And this is partly why we don't stay in the hotels, because we want to be right in the action, you know? We have breakfast on the roof, and it's just amazing. Oh, I went up the tower. Dan, you have FOMO on this one. Uh, this guy, yeah. Zap Zapata Zapatero, Zapatero. He fixed my shoes that were falling apart for one dollar, right? So if you got any shoes, you can get your shoes fixed. And I made a portrait of him. So this day, I took my shoes to him. I picked it up the next day, and I made a nicer portrait of him. Uh, Edward is asking the recommended route from the U.S. It it really depends where you travel from. I mean, from from Miami, there are like. Several flights everywhere, but uh, I know there are flights from other places too. It, it really depends where you're flying from, but uh, Miami is the, uh, you know, uh, basic, you know, is, is the traditional route. Uh, yes, from LA, probably you will have to, uh, you know, uh, fly to Miami first and then from Miami to Cuba. I don't think there are direct, direct flights from LA. We have to stop in 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 Miami. There's me. Um, yeah, a sleeping rooms have air condition. Carlos, do we have AC in all the places on the rooms? I think so. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Um, back to back to the power thing. Uh, we we had uh, a lot of issues with that, especially because of uh, some lack of maintenance in the power uh, power plants. But right now. It's back to normal, so we we uh, I'm almost hundred percent sure we won't have any affectations on February. And yes, there is there is air conditioner. So the pretty much the standard that we will have in the rooms is very clean, uh, good mattresses, hot water, cold water, uh, air conditioner, um, uh, good tablecloths, good towels. So, and really nice people, good breakfast as well. So that's pretty much uh, the minimum standard we're going to get. Yeah, really nice people. Um, I stopped on these photos at the end here because this is an example of what we may be doing or will be doing on the workshop after at the end of the main tour. Um, we had a mansion that we rented for the afternoon. We had three ballerinas. Um, we probably won't have that many because we had a bigger group on this particular occasion. But what I wanted to show you this because basically what, what I do is um, Dan and I split up on this occasion because we had a group of 12 and um, we posed a different girl. So I was posing this girl and setting up the shots. And as you could see, the group is all taking their photos. Okay? So I usually set it up, take a few shots, and then I back away and then let everybody else take their shots. Okay, same for this one as well. I set it up and then let everybody photograph. Okay, so generally this is the kind of help that we will give you and helping you with settings, especially on, on the workshop portion after the end, right? You know, using tripods, setting up flash if we're using flash, because I know Dan was using some flash. Uh, for example, this one has flash. Dan is holding the flash off to the left. You can actually see the flash, the shadow on the ground here, right? And then I processed it to darken the background and make it more blue, right? This one has flash as well. You can see her shadow, right? 
So whenever we do this kind of thing, we set the flash up and we give you a remote, you use it on your camera and we tell you all the settings and how to get the same, the same kind of shot. Okay, so anything like that that we are setting up, we give you all the settings to use. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Did we cover everything? I think. Yeah, I guess we did. If there are any more questions, you can guide with us now. Um, we want to you know, give it one minute or two. Well, I have a uh, question. I'm still watching. So I want to know how many of you have been to Cuba. So put in the put it just the Q and A. I know that the chat doesn't work. Actually, do hands up. How many of you have been to Cuba? Do the little hands up thing. Let's just see how many hands up do we got? Six, seven, eight. Well, I know Karen has eight. Okay, cool. And now you can put your hands down. How many of you want to go to Cuba after watching all of these pictures? I should see like, I should see 48 hands. <laughs> <laughs> 22. All right. Great. We have six spots left, guys. So we have a question from Sue. Cost of the trip minus the airfare. So do you want to cover that down? Maybe just share well, share your screen and, and bring up the um, Oh that actually that was that's a good idea. Bring up the tour page. Yeah. The cost of the tour is forty eight seventy five. I'm going to show the screen. I'm sure that we will, Stephanie. Um, yeah, we're just, you know, Dan Dan is now, we've kind of reversed. I was organizing the tours and he was working for me as a tour guide and now we've just reversed. He's organizing and, and I'm going and he has formal. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here's the the booking page. You go to the, the website, is phototoursandexpeditions.com. They are actually, uh, three tours right now that is doing cuba then i have two more tours coming uh next year uh, which i'm going to be leaving one in morocco and the other one in antarctica but for the uh cuba page you have all the information here uh you have the complete itinerary there right so everything that is included there you know your tour leader is there so, um, you know, frequently asked questions. And here is where you have the booking information and the pricing. So, uh, you know, it's 48.75 um, and we include almost every meal uh, on the tour. 7.95 is your deposit. There is a single supplement if you don't want to share with someone. If you are traveling on yourself, we will try to match you with someone of your same gender. So you can share a room, that's an option. If not, you can just um, use the single supplement and you have a uh, room for yourself. Um, that lane is going to be there, uh, I think two or three days before we start. Uh, and that's not something that, you know, uh, it's not part of the tour, but some people, you know, sometimes they want to come uh, one or day, two days uh, before, that's possible. We can arrange uh, extra night accommodation on the same place where we are doing. We actually huh? recommend, it. We recommend it because yeah. now travel is kind of wonky and uh, at least one day. Yeah. yeah. If you come one yeah. day early, just let us know and we can book the the same accommodation for you, so we're all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, that's basically the 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 process uh, for uh, booking the tour. Um, I'm going to share my screen again because I want to show yep. one of our group shots. And this is from the last one we did. There's Carlos in the back. Um, Karen is there in the middle. And um, Karen broke her leg on the trip. And she managed to finish the whole trip with us. And she was such a trooper. So... Uh, if you want to know about the medical system in Cuba, <laughs> ask ask Karen. She had an experience, and she said that they took very good care of her. Yeah, even with that, she ended up dancing on the. Yeah, with her cast. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, but that brings up the question also of insurance. You do have to have medical insurance to enter yeah. Cuba. It's required, mm -hmm. so you do have to have travel medical. 
Um, and if something were to occur, there are there are local hospitals, but there are also tourist designated ones. Um, so if something were to occur, we make sure that you get taken care of if you have any uh, type of emergencies, which have occurred on some of our previous tours. And as I said, Karen broke her, her ankle. And I know well about that because I broke my ankle in Colombia. So we don't want to have any of that, um, but just know that we will take good care of you uh, no matter what happens. But you do require insurance. Any other questions? We would love to have you, Shelly. Um, where where are you? Where do you live, Shelly? Um, are you in the States or Canada? We actually have a couple coming from Australia. Um, I've had people from New Zealand. I've had um I've had a lady from South Africa. Okay, so she's from Houston. So yeah, you would just have to connect over to Miami and you could easily join us. So yeah. uh, it's great, you know, if you're not able to join us this year, all of you, um, please consider keeping this in mind and, and join up for next year. Make sure that you're on my email list or Dan's email list because um, um, you will get notice of that. Who organizes the medical insurance? Usually when you book a flight, Ed, you can book that with the flight. Like that's what I did with mine with Air Canada. Or you can get an annual policy if you're traveling more than just that one thing. Um, but I would highly, 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 highly recommend um, whatever you do, book with a travel agent because any trouble with flights or anything, they will be able to go to bat for you. If you book with Expedia or any kind of online service, um, you may have troubles if you have to make any changes or if there's any uh, flight delays or, or cancellations. <clears throat> Kevin said he found flying from Houston to Havana. Interesting. Very nice. I see that. Okay, direct. Okay, there you go. So you can connect from San Francisco then, Kevin. Okay, cool. And I saw that you said, Kevin, that that might be a good option for you to just come for the three days uh, because he has to get medical from yeah. permission from his doctor. So. Check that with your doctor, Kevin. Um, and if you have any other questions, if you, um, how can we share the the link in the chat? Can you chat, Dan? Dan? I I I said it a couple of times. I wouldn't do it again. Because we can chat. It says we can chat. Put it in the chat. Put the link to the page in the chat. So when you go to the the information page for the tour, Dan has a little chat bot in the bottom corner that if you have a question while you're on that page, you can literally just ch type it in there and it will ping him. And often if he's online, um, he gets it to his phone and he'll answer right away. So do you have a link to the sales page down? I have it. Yeah. I have it. Oh, there, <laughs> now we both All have right, it. Yeah. <laughs> so it looks like the chat does work. I don't know if anybody else has any um, comments. You can probably chat, I think, but uh, I think that's everything. Unless we have any other questions. Did we miss any? No, they, so we will share uh, the recording somehow probably tomorrow or the day after tomorrow with you guys. Um, and in the meantime, if you have any questions, yeah, you can go to that website. There is contact information there. There's also the, the chat button, button, so you can actually ping me or send me an email directly from there. And, you know, we'll get back to you in any questions you guys may have. Yes, esperemos de verte en Cuba. Yes. For those of you that don't yes. speak. Yes. <laughs> we hope to see you in Cuba. Yeah. Where, where Thank are you? Thank you so much, everyone. Hopefully it was productive and we answered questions and, you know, we, we show some images of what we normally uh, get, you know, and get us inspired. And this is. We try to make the trip as fun as possible with as much photo opportunities uh, as possible. And, um, well, you guys know that have been with me before that uh, I really like to have a good time and interact with the people. So. If that's something that you are shy about, um, if you're shy about street photography, Cuba is absolutely the best place for you to go because people there, they have no problem with it. Get right in their face. They love it. It's closer than India. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. We're going to end it here, right?
Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. Take care, everyone. Stay warm if you're in Alberta. And have a happy holidays. Bye. See you in February. See you in February, Carlos. Can't wait. It's been too long. It's been too long, Carlos. Yeah. Yes, too long. Yeah. <laughs> okay. See you soon. Okay. Bye, guys. Ciao.